Okay, let's talk about the phases of making a game. It's pretty easy, you just uh, make a game, right? Well, not so fast. You probably want to have an idea of what game you're going to make, what platform it's going to be on. There's some pretty basic questions you want to answer. Let's call those two phases concept and production. But you probably don't want to be making the game right up until the instant that it shows up in people's hands. That's a good recipe for ending up with something that's pretty buggy and pretty uncontrolled. So you probably want to phase at the end where you fix things, where you limit the amount of changes that's going on and give yourself an opportunity to fix the bug that exists. But now with just concept, you don't really have a clear understanding of what the game actually is. You know that it's a mobile game. You know that it's got a team of 15 people. But you want to think about doing some vision where you can more clearly articulate exactly what the game is and what it isn't and what you're trying to accomplish. But as you get more phases like this, the good news is that actually you're able to start to overlap some of these phases. Uh, as you get clear on your concept, you're able to move in and start working on your vision. And your vision doesn't need to be completely done before you're able to enter into production. But unless you're making a direct sequel and using exactly the same platform that you made for your previous game, you're going to want to do a little bit of tooling. You're going to want to get make sure that you get the tools you need to make that game in place so that when people are making content, that the tools are as ready as is possible. But still not quite there because if you're doing new things, you want to prototype those and make sure that they're fun and that you understand how to make them. And then once you've done that, once you've made and prototyped this new kind of content, then you have to prove that you can actually make that at scale and make sure that cool prototype is actually something you want to put into the game. And then Finally, if you're going to have this thing on the consoles, after you're done fixing your bugs, you also have a period of time where you have to get ready to go into certification and get this thing in shape to be on the target platform. And then something you're starting to see on projects is this concept of a phase where you're balancing. You put it in the hands of your players and you give them an opportunity to provide feedback and you gather data from them so that you can iterate and balance and change your game to make it better. Now, obviously, these different phases are not all the same size, but the different relative size is very dependent on the game that you're actually making. If you're making something that's very multiplayer driven, then this phase at the very end, this balancing phase, can be incredibly important because this is where ultimately the long-term retention ability of your game comes into being. That balancing phase allows you to make sure that the systems that you've built are really tuned and really able to keep people interested long-term. On the other hand, if you're building something that's more driven off of a single hook, like an interesting piece of gameplay or an interesting concept, then you're going to want to spend more of your time in this prototyping phase and that proving phase to make sure that the game that you're making really has that hook that's able to keep people interested. Now, if you're building something that's more content driven, this is the kind of game that I've spent most of my career working on, then the, the most important phases are the tooling phase, the production phase and that fixing phase because these are games that are driven by their content, by the amount of game that you can make. Let's quickly look at an example. Dragon Age 2 was an extreme project compressed into a very short period of time. It was a content driven project. All of the phases did exist and did occur, but they were extremely compressed. The concept phase was essentially a single meeting we had right before Christmas in 2009. We did do some visioning because the art direction changed. There was some retooling, but not too much. And you may be looking at this and thinking, wow, that's amazing. Look at how much time was available for production. But there were consequences to this. Tooling is also a phase where a lot of the things you use to build other things are built. So as a result, we didn't build the parts needed to build different levels. That's one of the causes of the area reuse that you see in Dragon Age 2. With these different phases, you're going to want to have some places along the way 
where you can have gates or check-ins, places where you can make sure that things are still going in the way that you want to go and potentially make a decision that things aren't going well and potentially stop the project. So where should these go? Well, you want something somewhere around this place here, somewhere between the late stage of concept and the early stage of prototyping, where you all sort of agree that, yeah, this is indeed a game that we want to make. You're going to want another one here in the sort of proving phase or late prototyping where you get together, play the sort of nascent proto game that you have and agree that, yes, indeed, this is a game that is or is going to be fun. You're going to want something here late in the tooling stage and early production because this is where you're going to have the first really clear understanding of the potential scope of your game and understand what you're capable of actually making and if that's big enough or if the game is going to be too expensive to make. And then very late, as you're getting to that final phases, you're going to want to come back together one last time and make sure that the game is coming together, that the quality is there, and that you have a game that you're going to be proud of. Modern games often have some form of live service or some form of post-release content. So what does this look like? Well, really what you're doing is you're just duplicating those phases into each of those post-release content. In some cases, you're going to collapse away entire phases because the content you're building is very small. You understand it really well, and all you're doing is producing a new set of appearances. And so you might only do a vision phase and a production phase and then certify it. So three, only three of the nine phases actually survive. But in some cases, you're making things that are like miniature games. You go through all nine of those phases, and that's how you make good quality, larger content. So what are some ways that this goes wrong? Let me go into two. That early gate, that gate that happens near the end of concept and vision, that gate can become a wall because executives can start to pile things into that phase, wanting to see gameplay, want to see proof, wanting to see more and more and more in this gate, forcing more work to be done. This is often coming from a place of risk aversion. Executives and senior people have a lot of experience and they've seen projects fail. And in an effort to avoid that failure, they're trying to pattern match this project to other things they've experienced. But at some point, you have to take a leap of faith and let a project go forward. The problem is, is some of that work is premature. If you're doing prototyping before you've done vision or even concept, you're prototyping in the wrong place potentially. And this can lead to failure and you end up with this brick wall that is almost impossible for a project to get through. Another way that this can go wrong is projects can have difficulty getting out of phases that come before. So you end up in a project that should be in production and it's doing production work. But meanwhile, there's still prototyping going on and the vision is changing and there's still tooling to be done. And this divides work, causes rework and results in a game where a lot more effort is going in to just forcing the project through the phases than is required. Because instead of doing one to one and a half things at a time, you're doing four or five different phases all on top of each other. It's causing a lack of direction and it's causing effort to be wasted. So all that goes to say that you want those gates and you want them to matter, but you want to do the minimum amount of work to get to a gate and you want to pass it formally or at least formally enough to shift the thinking of the team between different phases. So when you have to set things aside, you can set them aside, but not block the project with an insurmountable collection of hurdles and gates and data collection that doesn't allow any project to be made. So those are the phases of game development. You will see them called different things. You will see them sometimes stuck together. You will see them subdivided further, but in broad strokes, these are the phases that are used for making games. If you found this informative or useful, think about giving this video a like. And I thank you for your support, and I'll see you again soon.